to I play did, in. I did try to encourage them to put a zip line yes, in. Yes, you did. <laughs> from I don't the deck. Think, I don't think they ever yeah. did. There just weren't that many built in Wisconsin. But in Racine, in the Racine area, we yeah, have we quite have a few. quite a few. Yeah, I would say we probably have almost 1% of the homes here just of that. Russ, here we are back again. And today, what are we talking about? Oh, today we're going to be talking about architecture, but particularly mid-century modern. Or Usonian homes, because yeah. there was a huge influence here in Racine. Um, and in Racine, we have quite a few for, for the state of Wisconsin, because mid-century modern and Usonian homes, there just weren't that many built in Wisconsin. But in Racine, in the Racine area... We yeah, have we quite have a few. quite a few. Yeah, I would say we probably have almost 1% of the homes here just of that Usonian mid-century. Uh -huh. But what's the reason for that? Probably the reason for <laughs> Racine having more, you know, a greater number of these type of homes is down to the influence of Frank Lloyd Wright. Well, and I wouldn't necessarily say influence as much as friendship. So something that yeah. people should probably know is that in Racine... So, Everybody has probably heard of S.C. Johnson, a family company. If you've, if you've watched yeah. any of their commercials, they always end with S.C. Johnson, a family company. So you've got things like Glade that they've brought under, et cetera, et cetera. So the Johnson family, who originally had Johnson Wax and have now, you know, boomed. Well, originally they were a flooring company. Right, but we won't get into that. We'll talk about their history yeah. at a different time, I think. However, in the early 1900s, Frank Lloyd Wright was based out of Chicago but was very um, friendly with the Johnson family. Yeah, in the I early... mean, originally he was born in Wisconsin. He was born in Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Yeah, he was born in Wisconsin. His main home was in Wisconsin, but his main home was not near Racine. It was a couple hours away. Yeah. So in the early two, in the early 1900s, that would have been a long ways to travel, especially since there weren't trains. There aren't trains that go from Racine over to where he lived, which is about an hour outside Madison. It's about an hour to the Dells from yeah. his house, Tallison, um, which is over in what's called Spring Green, Wisconsin, uh -huh. uh, about a couple hours west of Racine. So what made him come to Racine, though, and what made so many mid-century modern homes here is that he was friends with, with the Johnsons. Yeah. He built like a thousand um, different homes or different buildings, I should say, not necessarily homes. They weren't all homes yeah. because obviously, very famously, the Guggenheim in New York was designed by him. Um, and the S.C. Johnson building here in Racine. Well, there's two here in Racine. Yeah. So with, there's Wing Spread, which is like their little retreat up on the north side. Yeah, but that was built as a home originally. Correct. It's now used as, you know, people can book it for... Um, conferences Events. and stuff like well, that. Well, and NSC Johnson themselves, they use they it. Use it it's it's owned by the corporation. Yeah. So they actually use it for their corporate events and things of that nature. Yeah. But then there's also like the Golden Rondell. Right. So that's actually, and what's really cool is that we actually live in the downtown area and the Golden Rondell is in, it's like we are actually one to three blocks away, we can actually see the Golden Rondell. Uh -huh. Frank Lloyd Wright, though, was a friend of the Johnson family. So he was here a lot in the early 1900s with his Usonian architecture. He built homes for many of the Johnson families yeah. and that or family members. For example, if you go to Valley View Drive, which is right yeah. off of Spring Street, uh -huh. you will see if you go down Valley View Drive, it is a one way, not a one way, but it's a dead end road. Yeah. So you can't go very far because of where it is on the Route River. But if you go down Valley View Drive, you will see the a really strong part of his influence because most of the houses back there um, are Usonian in architecture, or some of them were built after Frank Lloyd Wright because because he had so much of his architecture here, his students came. He also taught, um, yeah, mid-century modern. So he had a lot of students. They actually went on and stayed in the area. Correct. And also 
added to that. Well, thing. he would be up here building something for the Johnsons uh-huh. in the early 1900s, um, early to mid 1900s, and his students would come up with him. So they became very familiar with the area, and they would meet people. And after they left being with him as their teacher or their mentor, um, they would then build or some of them would go on to start their own firms and and things like yeah. that. But he built wing spread. He built um, or he designed wing spread. He designed the Golden Rondell. He designed at least two or three of the houses for the Johnsons that we're aware of. And then we have quite a few in the Manry Park area. Um, we haven't quite touched on Manry Park. We'll be getting to that later in the year as far as what is Manry Park as far as the section ever seen. But we've been inside quite a few of these. We have, yeah. Yeah, quite a few of his students then started building in the late 40s, early 50s in this area. And yeah. quite a few of these homes. We've I've sold quite some. A few. We've sold some. Yeah. yeah. I've sold two of them, uh, two of what I would call, one of them doesn't have an actual student's name stamped on it that we're aware of, yeah. but it's on Valley View Drive. I find it really interesting. Do you remember the first time we showed it to R, it had velvet floor to ceiling it did. carpet. It was like You'd red velvet. Elvis lived there. Because yeah, except for it was red. Because if anyone's ever been to Elvis's, you know, yes, to house, Graceland. Graceland. Yes. He had a room that was carpeted floor to ceiling. Yes. Yeah. These were walls of red velvet uh-huh. because you're allergic to velvet and you yeah. couldn't even touch I the walls. Touch it. it was hilarious, though. But a great pool out back, which they restored, yes. which he and his wife restored. Um, and then we ended up selling another one to his daughter and son in law. Yeah, and that was built by one of Frank Lloyd Wright's That students. one was specifically built by one of the students, yeah. we know for sure. Whereas ours house, we don't have an actual name attached to it. But the odds are it was built by one of Frank Lloyd Wright's students for a yeah. couple of reasons. One, it's on Valley View Drive. Um, they're either Usonian or mid-century modern in on that street, or they're brand new in the last 20 years. Yeah. Because somebody, maybe their house burned down or maybe it got mm-hmm. demolished. and Because some of the houses over there, unfortunately, were not maintained. But there's quite a few, like I said, in Manry Park. We toured one, oh, about a year and a half ago that was up for sale. Yeah. Both us and our client really loved it, but not everybody keeps them up very well. And yes. because they do have huge windows that look out over nature, we're going to talk about that in a minute. But because one of the elements is these great big windows, when you don't keep those windows up, that's a and also, very costly thing to yeah, replace. Yeah, there's a lot of wood involved as well. Well, let's you know what? Let's go into let's that. Go into now that we've it, yeah. talked about Frank Lloyd Wright and we've talked about his influence in Racine and why uh-huh. we have so many mid-century modern homes here, let's talk about what are some of the elements... Of yeah, mid-century so modern homes. What makes it a mid-century modern home? Right, or Usonian, because yeah. Frank Lloyd Wright's were technically Usonian. His students were more mid-century modern. But what makes it a mid-century modern home? They were built around the 50s, so they had a lot of elements from the 50s. Well, late 40s to early and 50s. And up to today. Well, and the reason that they were referred to as mid-century modern is because, well, let's be honest, they were around the mid-century 1900s, yep. and they were the most modern home you could buy at the time. Yeah, so they had, they combined a lot of the modern aspects with the 50s buildings. Yes. So, for example, in a mid-century modern home, when it was originally furnished, you would find a lot of built-in um, benches yes. and sofas that were like permanent parts of the structure they mm-hmm. were not necessarily you didn't have a sofa that you could move in and out or when you yeah. change the sofa you might change the cushions that that soften that sofa but the sofa itself it was in space in fact some of them the beds themselves are built as part of the structure and they would have huge floor to ceiling windows yes at least on one side had to look out over nature Yes, that was very much a Usonian thing, yeah. for sure. But it carried over into the mid-century modern design. So designs. either it looked out over trees or water or fields. Um, I was talking about um, our client whose daughter and son-in-law. Well, theirs, actually, the window, they were right on the road. And the house is actually quite close to the road. It was very it was close, like, yeah. It was like only maybe 10 feet off the road. Yeah. Um, but on the roadside, it was just all small windows up at the top just to let in a little bit of light yeah. but the back side of the house was just floor to, floor ceiling. to ceiling windows floor to ceiling windows yeah. and it looks out over the woods that border the root river i think yeah. it was like 
a couple of acres of land is what went behind uh -huh, it. Yeah. Most of that land was not and really usable. And it went usable. downhill. Yeah, it wasn't really usable as like a backyard to I play did, in. I did try to encourage them to put a zip line yes, in. Yes, so you did. <laughs> from I don't the think, deck. I don't think they ever yeah. did. I, I don't think that was... So they had amazing back deck off of the back of the house. Yes. Um, looking out over the... Over the it was... Bringing absolutely nature gorgeous. into the house. Yeah, absolutely Which is gorgeous. what it was intended for. Yeah, and the so, one that we sold on Valley View Drive, it again was, it was set back from the house a little bit. So mm -hmm. it was more of a mid-century modern. The mid-century modern ones, they did set them back from the road a little bit more than the Usonians. Yes. The Usonians built them as close to the road as possible. And the reason for that was because they wanted to maximize that back space. Yeah. Whether it was a garden or a forest or whatever natural element it was they wanted to highlight. Uh -huh. So obviously you had a lot of that. But also inside, they had a lot of like wood. Yeah, it was mainly built of wood and stone. You'd have the odd splash of color somewhere in the house. But generally it was neutral tones Very neutral. throughout the house. And what I really loved about that type of house was... If you walked down the passageways, it was lined with cabinets. Yes. And if you opened those cabinets, you'd find dishwasher, washing machine, <laughs> tumble dryer, <laughs> fridge. It was all hidden away. Yeah. They did not like to have any, even though they wanted to, people to be able to have modern appliances, they did not believe they should be on display at all. Yes. They felt so the, the inside of the house. Very minimalistic. Well, it's partly minimalistic, but it was also partly the idea of not having electronics out and on display, uh -huh. having a more natural atmosphere yeah. even inside. So they, so it's funny because a lot of people think when they think mid-century modern, they think of like the plastic chairs or butterfly chairs, yeah. but that really didn't start happening until the 60s. 60s. That was more of a ranch style home, not the true mid century moderns. No. The true mid century moderns were more about nature. Clean lines. Clean lines. Lots of natural tones, uh, lots of neutral tones like you have. Uh, even the pops of color, though, were like deep greens or deep reds. Yes. They were very much, mm -hmm. or or golden yellows that were meant to Natural reflect. Natural colors. Right, that were meant to reflect like the colors of leaves mm -hmm. and, and bushes and, yeah. you know, and flowers and like things like that. autumnal colors. Yes, they're very autumnal in their colors. Yeah. Um, some of the other features, though, of mid-century modern is you almost always see vaulted ceilings in the main living area. Yeah. Um, a lot of them are beamed. A lot of them are beamed ceilings, like kind of just open. There's no attics, really. Mm -hmm. um, Mid-century no, moderns no. don't have attics, generally. Uh, vaulted ceilings even in the bedrooms. Yes, because literally w we've seen one where it was almost floating the bedroom. Yeah. It wasn't, you know, it almost looked because it was glass walls. Yes. So they could look out over the go because no one's looking into that type of house. No, because you're because those are all in the private spaces. Yeah, the the garden areas are the private spaces, so it's uh -huh. not like people are looking in at all, unless somebody's jumping over a fence, which doesn't happen yeah. very often in those. Sections. The only rooms that were really hidden away as such were the bathrooms. Yeah, so this is really interesting because there were definitely bathrooms built into them, but bathrooms were really minimal. Yeah. And really like small, like and, and that's the one downside to a mid-century modern home, at least the ones in Racine here, yeah. is that you in order in a mid-century modern home, in order to bring it up to modern uses and like what we would say modern mm -hmm. standards, you had to get rid of a bedroom usually. Yeah. Because you had to have another bedroom next to it that you basically said, okay, we're getting rid of that bedroom. And having a bigger bathroom. And having a bigger bathroom. Because yeah, because they would, the bathrooms were generally squashed between. And, and the bedrooms were not bedrooms all that big that. either. No. If you remember in, in, um, the in, ours, in ours yeah. daughter's house, the bedrooms in that were quite small. But the, the bedrooms were quite small. I was like, I, you could probably fit a queen size in here, but you're not going to fit a king size bed in here. So if somebody's looking for a king size bed, that doesn't really fit. Not a truly authentic Usonian slash mid-century modern type home. No. Because I didn't expect that you'd be spending much time in the bedrooms. No, it was more... The, bedrooms were utilitarian. The space was really the living area. Yes. The Indoor dining out. area. It's funny and because... The deck. What's interesting is Frank Lloyd Wright obviously did a lot more of these and his students out in the California area. Uh -huh. And another feature of them is that a lot of them did not have garages. Even in Racine, a lot of the mid-century moderns do not have garages. They have 
carports. Yeah. Which is why they took off it as a, as a design in California because uh-huh. you don't need them. There are some here that had garages. That do have garages because of our winters. There were some that were retrofitted yeah. with garages because they wanted to have somewhere to put the car and keep it, you know. Quite a few of them here in Racine, they have a carport. Um, let's see, what is it? The roofs are not as steep of an angle. No, as a traditional they tend roof. to be less of a pitch on the roof. Yes, a lesser pitch. But what's interesting is that oftentimes, not all of them, but some of them are like a single roof slanted in one direction, and it ends with going over the car park. Yeah. Like, like you have this carport. really... The carport, rather. You have a really tall in the living room area, yeah. then it kind of slants down when it gets to the bedrooms that are all on one side, and then the carport off to the... And it's like one yeah. roof that all slants in one direction. Most of them, the roofs were ju- uh, over the house. So it, it gave some covered walkway areas yes. as well. Yes, yeah. But we have quite a few. We have over, I would say, over 1% of the homes in Racine are mid-century modern, and they are available to the general public. They're not like super fancy, wealthy... No, they're not all museums like Wingspread no. and stuff like that. Yeah. There are some... That Very are accessible. We showed one a couple of years. yeah. I think they were looking up to 150, wasn't it? 150,000, that couple you were looking with? Saying like that, yeah. And this house was up for, was in their price point because we showed yeah. it to them. Now, it wasn't... And the only reason that was at that price point was because... It hadn't been maintained as well Correct. as it should And it been. did need to have some things. Done. But even if it had been updated, it yeah. still probably would have only been about 200000 yeah. Maybe two twenty five at best. Mm-hmm. Um, just because of where it is, the size it, it is. It was a smaller one, but yes. it still yes. had the same lines, the same design. There yep. was a couple of cracked windows, and some of the wood was rotten. And our clients they were FHA. Our clients were FHA. They needed to have a, a home that would pass FHA. Yep. But what's interesting is that these clients, when we walked into this house, I don't normally go along on your showings. No. But when I knew that you were showing this house, you wanted to see. I it wanted as to well. see the house. I knew it probably wasn't going to fit because I'm like, there's no way this mid-century modern is going to be in as good a shape as they need it to be, and be this price. But I knew that probably my only chance to actually see it. And so yeah. I went I went along on this showing and such a cool house. It was. Like, even they thought it was a super like they were like, oh, I wish we had the money to fix this house up because they really they loved the house. Yes. The house wasn't the issue. It was just the condition of the house was beyond uh-huh. their budget. So um, but they loved the lines. I, I get that there are some people who don't like mid-century modern, but I don't know why they don't. Yeah, but they're a pretty cool house, you know. They're just so cool. They're not like, and in this area, they weren't built as track housing. Like out in California, you will find that you'll have whole neighborhoods of mid-century modern style. Yes, you and will. then it does feel a little bit, ugh. but here, because each one was like individual, it wasn't like there was a whole street full of them. Apart they, from on Valley Drive. <laughs> well, but Valley View Drive, there's so much yeah. space between the houses and so much nature there around is, them yes. that you don't feel like you're in a subdivision. They're all on big lots. Right. So, Whereas in yeah, California, you do out. have entire like subdivisions that were done in, mm-hmm. in mid-century modern. And that, it feels a little bit redundant. But here, each one was done by a different person. It wasn't. Yeah. Most of them were not done by Frank Lloyd Wright. No, a lot of them were done by different students. Yep, or people who just studied Usonian studied, architecture and they loved yeah. they loved his style uh-huh. and they tried to emulate his style in their building. So, or yeah. in their architecture. So these are more in Racine anyway. They are more homes that were custom built homes at the time. They were not what the standard what the box standard was in those yeah, neighborhoods. Yeah, they were like one offs. And... Yeah, you won't find you'll find like maybe one on a. And street each one of we've been to have all been different. Yes. All They've never com- been the same. They've all d- had different elements. Yeah, all different elements and different. And it all has to do with how it rotates around nature, though. Maybe the reason people don't like mid-century modern is because the the Usonians that were not built on nature, the ones where they are just subdivisions, they don't make sense and they don't look right if they're not in a, se- a setting where you can really yeah. explore and have nature, like the beauty uh-huh. the beauty of nature behind it. Yeah, you don't so, want floor to ceiling windows looking out over another house or your neighbor's backyard even. yeah so you do have to have some land behind it yeah but i'd love to have a mid-century modern personally oh yeah i i love They're it good. it's one of my favorite designs i love wood as well but you do have to maintain it you have to look so after that's it. the biggest thing is that if you do want to buy a mid-century modern home here are the things you should look out for so the things you should look out for is be prepared for a big check when it comes time for windows 
Yeah. And also constantly keep in mind that you will have to constantly monitor the wood trim if you want to maintain that mm -hmm. look. If you yep. want to maintain that the look of a mid-century modern. Oh, yeah. Because wood is a big, big element. Interior wood is a big element. But that's all we have to say about mid-century modern, how much we love them, and that they are a big element here in Racine, and that's because of the Frank Lloyd Wright influence. So It definitely is. So if you do find any value in our content, do us a favor. Like. Subscribe. And don't forget to turn that notification bell on so you don't miss any of our future content. Right. So here's the thing. In the comments below, we're going to ask you, do us a favor and drop a comment. What is your favorite architecture type of home? If mid-century modern isn't your favorite type of architecture, go ahead and drop it in the comments. Thanks, you guys, for joining us. And hopefully you have as much fun as we do talking about Racine. And hopefully you want to come and live in Racine just like yeah. we do. Talk to you later. Bye, Bye. for now. Well, join us after this, and we'll let you know. <laughs> I thought we weren't going to do an intro. I thought we were. No. If you want to see us laugh and you want to see more bloopers, click like, comment, subscribe. Scroll right to the end of the video, because that's where they always are. Okay. We'll just take this and move it into. Okay, so the reason <laughs> for that is... <laughs> <laughs> but you're only supposed to ask them for one thing in the comments. Chocolate cake. No. Nope.